Well, back to the old seg machine. Been busy working. Haven't had time to do anything much, but figured I'd fire it up. I'm actually working on building some new rollers with a different configuration in the magnetism. I believe there's three ways to actually get the rollers to stick to the rings with three different types of or three different types of magnetic orientation of the magnets. So what I've done over here is knock together a little old freaking uh, ring magnet with a piece of copper around it. A couple of disc magnets with some copper around them. And some coils that I've been working on in the earlier stages of the SAG machine using a hall sensor to fire the coil but anyway what I'm noticing here is um, this works rather well too you know um, north South field, south north. You know, it seems to work really well, actually. So I'm thinking I'm going to build a prototype using the big rollers. So I built a couple of uh, new copper sleeves here that I'm going to load up with some ring magnets this time. Not too made there. Thirty-three millimeters long. 19 millimeters on the inside. They weigh 30 grams. So I'm going to load them up with some ring magnets. 11 of them to be exact. Which will have 16 poles on each magnet. Each magnet will have a configuration of eight north poles on one side and eight south poles on the other side. So I'm thinking that's going to give me <clears throat> a little bit more of a cogging effect with the roller wanting to roll forward. But perhaps I'm wrong. I mean, it may be better just with the one solid pole in the center, but what I'm going to do is lay it out with approximately uh, two millimeters of copper, three and a half millimeters of magnet. Twelve millimeters of Teflon with a quarter inch diameter core, iron core. The iron core will be in the center. Teflon neodymium ring magnets. Copper. I'm looking at the rings too, perhaps down the road I'm going to attempt to build some of these copper rings, the segments, stacking them, making multiple layers, but 
this is what I'm currently looking at. I don't think that that is really necessary to go through all the work to make all these individual little rings that basically just stick together when I can make the same thing inside of a single sleeve you know I think this will work equal as, equally as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure the ring like this with small magnets stacked on top of each other basically south at the bottom north at the top with multiple eddy currents or little mini currents in between so one two three four five six so we'll see where this ends up but I just have a feeling that this might be an interesting experiment these magnets are currently configured with the north poles pointing towards the center of the rings. The very center core in there is north. Very, very powerful. It's a radially aligned magnetic haulback ring. With the rollers basically configured in the same way. All layers are equal, therefore they have the same weight, right from the inner iron core, teflon, neodymium, to copper, and same throughout this ring assembly too. The rollers are all the same weight, within a half a gram. which was quite the achievement to accomplish not an easy feat the engineering required to develop these rollers was unbelievable I believe so far I've got about seven eight hundred hours into this project over last winter and I'm just going to keep playing with it and see where it all ends up, you know? Of course, I'd love to see it work like John Searle says it works, but that's yet to be determined. Just using this little old mini lathe over here. This is my main tool that's allowing me to engineer this machine. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. crash course on machining at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. You know what? I think I'm going to get myself a milling machine next. kind of like this machining stuff. Anyway, that's it for now. More to come. Things are looking up. Things are looking better. Three rollers, 12 volts input, and it is charging a battery using the typical Bedini circuit. So it's just catching the flyback voltage, throwing it into another battery. You can actually hear it surging. 
been a real bugger with these red switches. I'd be really looking to, in the future, figuring out how to get these other circuits to work here. It was unsuccessful in my first attempt using a uh, infrared sensor to activate the transistor to get them coils to fire. If I could ever get this to work, this would be the answer. It would be a nice, clean, crisp, firing, as opposed to these reed switches that are, I don't know, they're so mechanical as far as electronics goes <laughs> compared to something like this. You know, so that would be the answer down the road is actually to mount a circuit like this to read the uh, rollers either on top or on the side. You know, something like that anyway. Anyway, I thought I'd do a little quick update. Probably dragging on a little too long here, so... Until next time, this is Segmental, checking out.